Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless. Though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the Earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as Rock Shield of Carboniferous Age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel, an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint, a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western Mines history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine. We recently covered the astonishing discovery made deep within a coal mine under Rostov in Russia. Fortunately photographed by Mr. Kasatkin, an experienced safety engineer, who discovered the prints of what clearly appears to have been left by chariot's wheels. These seemingly impossible prints are, thankfully, not the only unexplained artifacts to have been found deep within the mines of Earth. In 1912, workers shoveling coal in the municipal electric plant in Thomas, Oklahoma, would make an equally important discovery. As they were breaking up the large lumps of coal in preparation for the furnaces, to their surprise, a small iron pot would be ejected from one of the chunks. Several experts would examine the iron pot over the following few days, all declaring it to be genuine. Apparently, the imprint of the pot could also still be clearly seen in the broken chunks of coal that had encased it for, in all possibility, millions of years. According to Robert O. Fay, of the Oklahoma Geological Survey, the Wilburton Mines coal, in which the pot was found, is an incredible 312 million years old. The cup is now displayed at a private museum in southern Missouri. It was fortunately photographed by Robert Nordling, who sent a copy to Frank Lewis Marsh, Emeritus Professor of Biology at Andrews University in Berrien Springs, on 10 January 1949. He forwarded the images to Wilbert H. Rush in 1971. Rush was a professor of biology at Concordia College. This means that we now have several artifacts we know to be in existence, which, according to modern understanding as to the age of coal, are over 300 million years old. The pot, 
is still within a private collection of an unknown collector. In 1944, a 10-year-old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was playing in his basement, smashing lumps of coal with a mallet, when he made an amazing discovery. The coal that he was playing with had been mined very near to where he lived in Upshur County, West Virginia, and is largely accepted to be around 300 million years old. Imagine then Newton's and subsequently his parents' surprise when he presented to them this small bell complete with strange winged figure and its possibly very ancient clapper, later found to be made of iron. Although there are many people who now insist that the dating of the coal must be incorrect, this little bell could also be a long lost relic, lost within woodland, that over the eons becomes perfectly preserved within the eventual coal seam, lost by an advanced civilization which once inhabited earth. The bell is considered an antediluvian artifact or an object of pre-flood origins by the Institute for Creation Research, who had the bell submitted for laboratory testing at the University of Oklahoma. Whilst there, a nuclear activation analysis revealed that the bell contained an unusual mix of metals, a mix of metals not uncommon to Earth but rather unusual for our current civilization to have decided to have manufactured it with, further supporting its authenticity as a very ancient relic. Later on in his life, Newton Anderson spent a great deal of time researching the figure atop the bell. He discovered similarities to the Babylonian southwest wind demon called Pazuzu. The demon typically is shown with a prominent headpiece like the bell figure. The Hindu deity Garuda is sometimes depicted on top of bells, as is the Egyptian Isis. The kneeling posture with hands clasped is also quite like Garuda representations. And because of this, some have argued that it must be an Indian Ganta bell. However, these similar and often confusing arguments over very similar deities could be seen as a consequence of cataclysm. Past civilization and the mythologies briefly retained, and all recorded at a time before such belief systems became too clouded with other outside influences. Another rare artifact is this strange handle, also found in coal and fortunately photographed before it vanished forever. Totally petrified and reportedly appeared to have virtually turned to coal. According to those who briefly investigated it, the handle appeared as well made as any modern handle. What do you think regarding these strange objects? Can coal form and objects petrify faster than we have ever witnessed? Or are these relics indeed millions of years old? Upon the shores of Lake Taupo within New Zealand, is an intriguing as yet unexplained artifact that has become known as the Kaimanawa Wall. What is interesting regarding the Kaimanawa Wall is the fact that it clearly predates academia's rigidly attested view of the past inhabitations of the country. New Zealand is largely accepted to have first been inhabited within the last 800 years. However, the analysis that has been done on this mysterious wall has shown that it is, at very minimum, 2,000 years old. Additionally, it clearly displays the telltale construction qualities of a lost knowledge, evidently within countless other ruins found all over the world. The controversial wall first came to public attention during the early 1990s, with a publication by Barry Brailfords in the New Zealand Listener called Megalith Mystery Are Giant Stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park. Evidence of an ancient New Zealand culture? Within, he details how analysis has shown that the stone wall is at least two millennia old and was created by previous unknown settlers within New Zealand. He called them the Waitaha and postulated that they were subsequently exterminated by the Maoris who arrived only 800 years ago. Furthermore, Brailsford maintains that the wall could link New Zealand with Egypt, South America, and many other ancient civilizations, continuing to list 12 pieces of evidence to support his claims. Predictably, however, individuals within many different fields of academia have leapt to the defense of currently upheld paradigms. The Department of Conservation, archaeologists, geologists, and just about every political party in New Zealand, including a number of media outlets, directed tremendous hostility toward the claims leading to the site being completely shut off to the public. You have to wonder, what are they so scared of people finding? Regardless of Brailford's evidence, 
a conclusion that the wall is nothing but a mere natural formation, has been publicly peddled ever since the publication nearly 30 years ago. A conclusion in staunch denial of reality or evidence. The conclusion made by official geologists was that the wall is an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claim that the block shapes were produced by fractures in the rock, attributed to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural events. It seems scholars are quite happy to date such sites, but extremely reluctant to attribute any intelligent design within their creation. Could the Kaimanawa Wall really be a 330,000-year-old man-made wall? A wall built by the same people as many other sites found across the world? We find such possibilities highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.